Hey everybody, this is Keith Perkins with a Motor Age video sponsored by Autel. In today's video, we've got a 2018 Nissan Sentra. This vehicle was in a collision and then repaired, now has quite a few lights on. Now, so far, all I've done is scan the DTCs of the vehicle, kind of got an idea that I do have a communication fault that we need to address. So, let's take a look at that together. All right, you can see we've got a full scan of the vehicle here. Let's go ahead and go to our report down here at the bottom. All right, looking at our initial diagnostic report, we can see we've got a couple codes in the, in the engine control module, one in the ABS, the BCM for an, a NATS antenna amp, uh, ICC ADOS. The HVAC sunload sensor fault is probably because the vehicle's inside and there's not actually any sunload going on. Looking at the rest of our report, I do see our monitor statuses are complete for most of them, except for the oxygen sensor monitoring, which does tell us that no one's cleared the DTCs, so we probably have a pretty decent look at what the vehicle looks like now. So knowing that this vehicle has a laser radar on the front of it and it's not communicating, that's kind of where we need to start. Now, on the Autel Ultra S2, it's got a really slick new function on the Topology 3.0. They've added in some functionality that closely mimics a lot of other OEM scan tools. So if we actually select the module, let's click laser, you can see I've highlighted it, it automatically shows the ping network tab. Now, if I'm not familiar with the, where the module is, I can click location graphics, it'll show me an image of where the actual radar component is. Now, you can see this vehicle has something called out as an ICC. And if you're not familiar with Nissan terminology, you may think that that is the intelligent cruise control unit itself, which would typically be called the laser. If we select the ICC module and let the tool show us its location, we can see it's a component inside of the vehicle. It helps us kind of determine what we're actually searching for. So in this instance, the laser radar, which is actually equipped on this vehicle as it was replaced, now, I'm not sure if they replaced it because it wasn't communicating or because it was damaged in the collision. We don't really know all the story yet, and unfortunately, until I get the report from the body shop, I won't know. So we're just gonna continue with the diagnosis. So we'll go back to ping network, and we'll click start. And as you can see, it shows up in red, and down at the bottom here where it says fault, that identifies that each time that number counts up, the tool has attempted to ping and communicate with the module, and the module did not respond back. So at this point, it's obviously a communication fault. So we're gonna have to start with powers, grounds, and communication circuit integrity in order to diagnose this. From the main menu, if we select vehicle data at the bottom here, it actually brings up motor true speed, which comes for one year with the purchase of the Ultra S2. So from there, we can actually search just generically by the term. We'll go ICC for intelligent cruise control. We'll select diagrams, and if we scroll to the bottom, all the wiring diagrams are listed. Right here at the end, we can open up the intelligent cruise control wiring diagrams. And if we zoom in, let's see here. So there's the ADOS control unit with the warning buzzer. Uh, here's the distance sensor itself. Looks like it's an eight pin connector, but it's just got four wires. So we have a ground at pin one. Pin eight is probably our power. Yep, from a fuse, which that's a great place to start right there at fuse number two. And then we've got the CAN wires that go to the distance sensor itself. So, let's take a look. At this point, it's gonna be much simpler just to lift the car up and check for powers, grounds, and comms directly at the radar first. So, I went ahead and brought down the interface and went ahead and hooked up uh, one of the leads that comes with the kit. So, let's take a look over here. The kit that comes with the Autel Ultra S2 is kind of nice. It's got all the same stuff you're used to getting with the Ultra line of tools with the oscilloscope, but it comes in a really nice carrying case that you can take pretty much anywhere. It's got a set of handles and zips up and you can pull it right out of the case. Now inside of there are some breakout leads. So I went ahead and found the appropriate size lead to fit the pins that are on the radar. Uh, I've got that set up and I've got one lead. I got another lead pulled out in case we gotta go two channels just to see where this goes. Comes with some nice large dolphin clips to hook up. So the way we've got it set up currently is we have the, the scope set up here. I've got my ground hooked up to a ground lug on the, the support. And then we've got our one channel here that we're gonna hook up to the actual radar to check for powers, grounds, and comms. 
Okay, so we've got our appropriate size lead. We wanna make sure that we use, if we're gonna be going into the front of a connector, like we're doing here, because we're gonna check pin tension and power supply, ground supply, and communication circuit integrity. To do that, if we are gonna go in the front of a connector, we need to use an appropriately sized connector. This one is really good. It's labeled out for us at 0.7, so we can confirm this is correct for the actual uh, terminal itself. So when we go in, we're not gonna spread the terminals. We're gonna just use an appropriate sized one so we can check pin tension and the availability of power grounds and comms. So set up on the tool here, uh, we were hooked up in Diag. As you can see, the, uh, the t looks like it's pinged 25 times. So this really is a bit of an intermittent communication. As you can see under the ITS scan, it's still counting up and doing our ping test for us. Now, if I go back to the home screen, select over to measurement, go to oscilloscope. Now we've got that turned on and connected. Now I need to set up my channels. So I'm gonna go down here to channel A, which is what I'm using. Change our voltage, because a CAN bus is gonna be two and a half volt biased up and down. Now it should be fairly active as that's the only module on this network, on this ITS network. So that appears to be CAN low, and as you can see, there's a lot of data going on, and that's because there's only one module on there. The ICC ADOS module's communicating, attempting to communicate to the laser unit, and it's not working. So we'll check the other leg, which should be CAN high. Yep. Now, in a, in a perfect world, we would wanna go ahead and put these both on there and make sure they mirror each other. But at this point, with what I'm seeing, I believe it's gonna be a power ground issue. All right, so I've gone ahead and hooked up a test light to the same connector so I can put that on there. Let me see if I can place this in a position where you can see it. And then we'll go to the power just so we can check our light. As you can see, it's connected and it comes on. So that was our power that we checked earlier. Now, again, it only carries 220 milliamps. That's enough, but we need to check our ground. So we've got to move our connections to have a power supply. And down here, the best spot to check is right here at the radar. I already have power. Now I grabbed a second connector so we can check the ground. We can check the ground against the power that's right here. So where I would take my ground connection off where I was using, connect that to the scope. Sorry, scope on a rope, my test light. And then we're gonna go into the ground. Okay, so we're missing our ground because if I take and move the ground lead off of the ground that's supplied it to the radar and go there, we've got it. So we're, we're missing a ground to the radar. Now, this was in a collision and everything up here looks like it's been touched. A visual inspection and then a good like wiggle test is probably gonna be a big part of this. So looking up here, there's quite a bit of harness that's disconnected from where it should be. So we're just gonna kinda visually inspect. The harness looks like it's actually been hit in a couple spots. Hold on. Wiggle it. Turn my light off, maybe you can see it. We need to hook this radar back up and look at the ping test and see whatever circuit problems going on is our only circuit problem. Oh, you see that? So when I move this piece of harness right here, if I pinch it and twist it like this, it looks like it's talking. See that? Let me stop and start. I won't move. Looks like it's talking. If I let go, oh, I fixed it. So let me move the camera. Let's get this tore apart and see if we can see what's going on. Okay, I got you in here with me. I actually broke it while I was trying to take it apart. So I kind of made it worse, but if you can see right here. Yeah, you see it when I reached in here to pull it apart, it snapped right apart. I bet it got hit in here. And if you notice, there's a lot of damage to the condenser. There's even some damage here to the little the bracket that actually has the hood latch attached. Looks like we've got a kind of typical low quality repair that's happened here. Gonna have to have a conversation with the, with the body shop. So from the moment that Topology came out on the first generation Ultra, most of us technicians asked for it to mimic that OEM function that some other OEM tools have, which is a live network ping. And they've listened and they've added it to the tool. And as you can see, it does well above and beyond what I expected it to do. It's kind of nice that I can select more than just the one module. I could have selected an entire network for it to ping. A matter of fact, 
as you can see, there's even an all button, and then I can click start, and it'll go one by one and ping each of the modules. All right, so it looks like I've got some wiring repair and a few other things to get done in this car before we can do some calibrations. So thanks to MotorAge and thanks to Autel for sponsoring this video. We'll see you guys next time.